So for 25 years I've been going backwards and forwards to yachts with little boats like this, 8 or 10 foot, with outboard engines on the back. It's always noisy, it's dirty, and they often break down. That now is starting to change and we've got a new generation of electric outboards which are transforming what it is to be on a little dinghy. So today on the Mariner we're going to be reviewing the Torquedo 1103. Let's have a look. We bought this Torquedo in, um, in Brest in France about a month ago now. Well, I guess a bit more, maybe six weeks. But we've had it here in Nova Scotia for a month. And uh, I got to say, it's a transformative piece of equipment. Like clearly, it does the job of taking us from the dock out to the boat. We, we understand that. And it does it absolutely perfectly. But it's the way it changes being on the boat. Like I'm talking to you now, and there's maybe a little bit of wind on my microphone as we drive around here. but. This is completely silent, and the manufacturers say that it's 33 decibels. Um, that's the equivalent of a whispered conversation. I know that my, um, my dishwasher is like 59 decibels, and it's very, very quiet. I think when it's on maxi chat, it's probably about the same as my dishwasher. So I'd say it goes up to 50 decibels, but that's still only a, a conversational level. It's like somebody having on the phone next to you while you're driving the dinghy. So, um, the operation of it is extremely simple, just twist and, and off you go. This one is replicating a three horsepower motor. This is the Travel and its code is 1103. This is a short shaft so it's suited to this little boat. You can get it in a long shaft if you want to put it on a, on a little sailboat. Um, and I've got to say, it's, uh, the thing which has been most noticeable is that it's, it changes being on the dinghy. It is pleasant to be on the dinghy. I, I'm not somebody who goes for a drive out on my dinghy to go and see what's going on. But I live in a very beautiful part of the world um, and it would be nice to have a little boat you just go poddling around on, bring your cup of coffee and, and enjoy yourself. You don't do that with a two-stroke, three-horsepower motor. With a Torquedo, you absolutely do do that. And I've done that a few times the last week with my partner. This little eight-foot Walker Bay dinghy, which has got barnacles on the bottom and dirt inside it and scuffs, and it's just a work boat, has suddenly become this kind of wonderful magic carpet that we take out on some quiet mornings just to enjoy the area. You know, once you bring the, the pressure back off like that, go down to about 75% throttle, it'll go all day. We went right around the island where I live here with um, only 33% charge in the engine. We went at three knots and it went all the way around, which is like, I think it's about three miles around the island. So it's very, very economical with the power it's got. Um, it's got 915 watt hour battery if you want to know details. But the good thing is that if you've got any questions, it's all on the display on the top here. You've got the battery percentage at the top. You've got the nautical miles until you need to be recharged is um, beneath it. You've got your current speed and then you've got uh, the throttle position and how many watts it's using from the engine. So lots of good information there. But behind the scenes, it's also got a GPS function, which you can then have your phone have a little app and you can track where you are it's got a map and so you've got a, a map of the area and I'm saying map I'm not using the word chart because it's not actually Admiralty chart but you've got a map of the general area and it shows you a range of like how far you can go at the at the throttle position that you've got right now so these are functions we've we've never seen before getting it on and off the boat is super easy getting the handle off is just flick it up and, and get rid of it taking the battery off it's a little bit heavier but it's only like a gallon of fuel, that kind of weight, just put it on the dock and then that leaves the stem of the engine, the actual shaft going down and the bracket, um, that bit lifts up and it's maybe the equivalent of, um, I'm trying to think, like a heavy bag, like eight kilos, something like that, it's not very heavy. So it's a very, very simple system to operate. It's um, absolutely, as I say, transforms the boat and we've been running it basically five days on a charge and it's probably about 300 meters out to the boat and just trolling out to the boat and trolling back, not trying to go too fast, it's done five days like that. So 
In terms of buying it, you know, it's not super cheap. I got a bit of a deal on this because I was buying some other bits and bobs. So it was 2,000 euros and I got with it the, the bag that the main part of the engine goes into and another bag that the, um, the battery goes into. And that makes me feel like I'm kind of going to the golf club when I've got these two things on my shoulder, but there's no oil. There's no petrol uh, leaking out anywhere. There's no spills. There's no messing around with spark plugs. We have had a couple times where it's shown an error and the error was just that these um, cables in the top here were not completely seated home. And uh, it just, the, the issue I had with my outboard today was it said error and I fiddled with a couple cables and then my outboard worked. Like if you've had a lot of experience of messing around and pull starting and pull starting and pull starting until your shoulders sore, this is a fantastic option. So if you've got limited mobility in your shoulders, if you've got in pre-existing injuries, if you're a little bit older and looking for something lighter, this absolutely could suit you, suit you down to the ground. So let's go for a little drive around here and see what kind of speed it's got. We've got a little bit of wind today. We've got about 10 knots maybe blowing. So we'll chug back up wind and see what speed it can do. Okay, so we're going about 45 degrees to the wind, which is good for these little waves. They're only about 20 centimeters high. Obviously, we've got the cameraman in the bow. <laughs> I don't want to soak all his gear, but um, this would be the kind of, you know, you're going out to the boat on a normal day, it's 10 knots blowing, you're looking forward to your sailing, and we're doing, we're doing four knots upwind, which for a little eight foot walker bay like this, do you need much more than four knots to get backs and forwards to your boat? Like, I don't think so. You've covered a mile in 15 minutes, silently, quietly, and very, very easily. So this kind of thing I think is, uh, but for what we've got going on here, this little bay where we are is almost like a little lake. It's closed off by only about a 250 meter wide gap over here. So it's very calm, um, very flat water. I think if you're going up and down through big swells, you may have to consider whether it's got enough power for what you're trying to do. If you're heavily lading the boat, then also that's an issue. But we've had four adults in this dinghy, which is the maximum I'd like to take on it. It's got the extra uh, rib outer, which Walker Bay do, so it's very stable. But with four adults on it, it'll still do three and a half, four knots. So it's doing everything we want it to do, and it's doing it absolutely silently. It does it for an entire week without me needing a charge. I think if I was going forward, I'd probably get a spare battery just to have it there in case you know something goes wrong with the charging or I've forgotten to charge it up entirely. So it is an extra 700 euros to get an extra battery, and then you're gonna be carrying an extra bag. So you may have to just consider how you're gonna store things and move things and how much money you want to put into this kind of thing. Here in Canada, outboard engines are actually very expensive. So the price of the Torquedo in Canada looks quite comparable to something similar on the market. If you're in Europe or if you're in America, where you can easily get hold of secondhand outboard engines quite cheaply, maybe this is a, you know, a price point further up, but it's completely silent. We're filming this video with the outboard engine doing four knots behind me, like that extra five or 600 bucks may really be worth something to you. Okay, downsides with this engine. Um, we've had the, the engine and we've treated it as we would a little outboard engine for a couple of weeks. If you're living in the Caribbean, you lift the boat up maybe on the back of your boat most nights, but some nights you forget, so it sits in the water. And then it sits at the dinghy dock at the local bar or other interesting tourist site. Um, so it's gonna be in the water. This one's been in the water for three or four days and you can see there's some barnacle growth, there's a little bit of um, discoloration and algae growing on it. The question for me would be how do I get that off because everything's plastic, it's not like it's got a, a powder coat or an enamel coat which is very resistant to cleaning. Um, we've also had our first bit of breakage as well. You can see here that we've got a little uh, damage on the corner of the uh, engine. This comes from the fact that the battery, when you carry the battery it has a handle at the back here and when uh, it's in your hand, these sharp points are pointing downwards. And when, if you accidentally let go of it, as I did, uh, it comes down on those sharp points and then this little piece of plastic, point is just gone. So it's not perhaps as robust because it's made of plastic um, and it's maybe not quite as easy. You can't just leave it in the water, but as we said, it's so light, it's so easy to load and unload. Maybe I need to change my style towards outboard engines to include Yep, take the battery off, hand the tiller up, and then lift this little uh, stem thing off and pass that onto the boat. It's not like having a normal um, outboard engine. Different rules apply, so it maybe needs different uh, way of dealing with it. Um, the, the propeller on it, it, 
One thing I will note, I went diving the other day. We're actually just putting in a new mooring over here. You can see this orange buoy where we're starting to get ready for uh, the new mooring for uh, Osprey. And uh, going down there, this little boat was being used as the support boat. And uh, we did a few tests with me on the bottom. You can barely hear this underwater. You can normally hear the outboard engine zooming past. With this, you can just hear a faint rustle. So you're gonna to have to be very aware if you are in areas where people are in the water, particularly if they're underwater, you, you can't hear anything from this engine at all. So be very aware of those um, alpha flags or those uh, American style dive flags, the red ones with the stripe across. Um, if there's divers in the water, they will not hear this. So uh, easy to break materials. I guess the answer to that is don't drop it. Um, how easily can it become fouled? Change perhaps the manner in which you deal with outboards. Just realize it's not that hard to take it off. Um, and it's very, very quiet underwater. The other thing is like, you might think, well, what happens if the battery runs out? I know with electric cars, range anxiety is a big deal. It's telling you exactly how much it's got to go and you can back off the throttle to make that go further. Um, you could have a spare battery here in a waterproof bag. That would be the equivalent of having a ga an extra you know, gallon of gas on the boat. So you can have an extra one. So range shouldn't really be an issue. And if you've got the app, you can actually see a circle of how far you're likely to go. So I think it's got it all going on. Oh, the other thing I should mention is that it can be solar charged. So you can actually buy a solar charger directly from the manufacturer or set up your own system and just lay it out on the boat here. So it's just charging all the time. So it's like it's being being filled up with gasoline whilst you're not here. So range anxiety really shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue. So I gotta say from my point of view, it's amazing. Now, okay, next question, how does it tow? So we towed it out the water behind the big boat for a day, um, I guess we had like eight hours on the water. That was um, in about 20 knots of wind and it was being towed by an 80 footer that was doing 10 knots and it was completely fine. Um, everything is IPX67 um, waterproofed, so it's uh, all the connections and everything uh, are all secure. So as long as these little connection points are screwed on, the little caps in there for the charging, you, you can't really go wrong with it. Another thing I have noticed though with it is that you need to be very cautious when operating the tilt mechanism. I just stop here in a little flat spot. The tilt mechanism is a little bit similar to a normal outboard. There's a, a catch on one side, you flick the catch up and then you pull on the outboard and it clicks into position. So that's exactly the same as you might expect. It does then mean that this tiller is kind of separate from the operation, which is a bit of a strange gig. I'm not sure why they haven't got that so it stays in there. You can see it's got to fiddle that in. It is kind of hanging up. There's no real reason why it should come off. And behind the, uh, the 80 footer with um, t at 10 knots, it didn't like come apart or anything. We did see the propeller was turning quite quickly because this little boat was on the plane but um, once you've got it into this position whether you accept or don't accept this um, you know it's all it's all good but putting it back down there's a little catch on the side here we'll show you I've got to find it <laughs> it's found here somewhere oh there we go um, when we got that it had a little like orange button on the end of it that immediately flicked off in the first five seconds there's no glue on it you pull on the catch which again is similar to most outboards up it comes Ooh. lift up the weight drop it down but then most importantly, you must remember to lift this other little catch or rather press the little catch down on this other side. Once you press the catch down, it's secure. If I go into reverse, it holds it down, which you might expect. But if you click it down like a normal outboard and you forget about this guy, I think we've all done that before. So it's not that it's any particularly different from an outboard engine, uh, but the thing is that we are looking for problems because it's new technology. If you don't properly click down an outboard, it does that. With this one, you just got to remember, click that down and then you're, you're good to go. But they, I will say with this, it has a lot of torque. As we know, electric motors have 100% uh, torque right from, from the first time they move. So if you want to stop, you can stick this in reverse and it, it stops you pretty darn quickly. So maneuvering with it is very, uh, very easy. The other thing I've noticed is that the the shaft, because it doesn't have a gearbox and it doesn't have drive shafts, they're able to make the, the sail, the, the, the shaft of the, uh, of the outboard, whatever shape they want. And they've chosen this very nice, like profiled, um, like almost like a knacker shape. So when you want to steer the boat with the um, outboard as you're coming into the dock or something, it's very easy to steer into the dock with, with no, uh, no speed on whatsoever. So it's easy to maneuver. It's super quiet. Um, it's very light. It's um, got all these extra features like how fast are you going and how far until you stop. It's got the app. The question is, 
are you going to be the one that kind of makes a problem for it by the fact that it's new technology so you're trying to find an issue with it that was definitely my problem at the beginning i'm like oh this is different this is new it just requires a little bit of getting used to but once it is man going for a drive in your dinghy whoever does that imagine turning to your uh, significant other and saying would you like to go for a ride in the dinghy <laughs> with the three horsepower two-stroke engine like no one's ever going to say yes to that but suddenly as i say you get your coffee out you get your sunglasses on it's nice and quiet you got a little boat like this i would also like to note that we do not have our life jackets on either myself or the cameraman because we're right next to the dock it's very shallow here it's super warm weather we have the the rib side on this oh but i haven't of course clicked in i haven't of course clicked in the safety tether so let's do that okay so this brings me to my only real gripe with this boat this is extraordinarily cheap this little bit here they could have done something like everything's plastic why make this metal this is now going to mark any clothing it goes onto, and it's got the dead man switch I'll stop there but it's magnetic so i don't know exactly how to um cowboy one of these if this goes over the side that's why i've been keeping it attached to the the stem of the engine if this little magnet is not present the engine won't run if the if you've lost this, you know, if you have a, a dead man switch on a normal outboard engine, you can of course just get some tape or something or some string and just pull out the dead man switch. I'm not sure how you replicate that. That's, I don't have magnets on me, but I always have a bit of thread or something. So this maybe is something that they could, they've maybe overthought that a little bit. Why don't they just have a normal dead man switch and then you can just cowboy it if you have to. In the event of a normal outboard not being able to start, we have a little piece of thread here in the boat and we can just wrap it around and we've still got the dead man suddenly this is like having a key to a car if you haven't got your keys you can't start it but it looks cool that's good and it's orange which is good so we say very easy to steer it when it's at very low rpm because of that uh that shaft sail is so it's so well shaped it's so easy to drive the boat along just drop my little thing on that's it I don't think you can go wrong. That is a fantastic way to get around. It's a little bit more expensive. Definitely, they're working with the um, working with the details here, with the uh, the way it goes together, the the screw connections. The the exact design of it is not honed down. But look at outboard engines from you know Seagull engines is what started us with um, gasoline outboard engines, right up to modern day four stroke Suzuki, almost silent little things. We've had seventy years of uh, development. We're just at the beginning of this. These uh, torpedoes are only a decade old, really. So I think this is a great option for anybody that wants to think about the environment a little bit, think about the experience for their family or for themselves going on the boat and not having to worry with all that gasoline. It keeps gasoline off your boat. Um, you don't have to deal with all the oil and all the messing around. I think this is a great option for anybody that wants to buy a new outboard right now. And this two to three horsepower area, a little work engine just to go back and forth to the dock. I don't think you can do any better than this.